I know she's in there, Mfuru. You can't keep me out of there. Please don't make a scene, Dr. Fenhill. I am not making a scene. I'm sorry. Am I causing a scene? See, Mfuru? We could have avoided all this unpleasantness if you just let me talk to Jesse in the first place. Let me get one thing straight. Jesse and I are not friends. I just owe her, okay? As for the rest, I'm trying to figure that out. All I know is that she's been here too long, and she's apparently not receiving visitors. Be my guest. If you know something I don't about dealing with hospital bureaucracy, I'll be impressed. What seems to be the problem? If only my other patients had so many inquiring after them. I'll tell you what I've told the others. The records say Ms. Doyle checked herself in and requested I admit no visitors. The requests of our patients are paramount, so no, you may not see her. She's not my patient. I'm certain no one on my staff would falsify patient records, if that's what you're implying. Take care. Take care. You ever wonder if maybe folks keep doors closed for a reason? For the last rats is on rotten time! Leave me in peace! You whole-headed quacks do know that restful recuperation requires not being disturbed, don't you? What? Why? Everything's fine. We're all fine here. No need for her to be worrying her pretty little head about me. I'm just terrible, dreadful sick is all. Got a cough that won't quit and sores all over my body. Highly, lethally contagious. But I'll be fine, so long as I'm left alone. Should have known she'd send a bruiser after me. Damned if I don't rue the day I saved her scrawny little hide. Inadvertently, I befriended a bloodhound in the process. All right, okay, we can discuss this like the level-headed folk that we are. Seems I've got to do something before Ellie goes jabbering my business to anyone with one ear and an intent to listen. The truth is, I'm not sick. But if you repeat what I'm about to tell you to anyone, I will deny it with my dying breath. You, uh, ain't with the board, are you? See, I owe them. A lot. I might have missed a payment or two, and the other night I swear someone was following me back to my room. So I hold up here to lay low. Udon Bedford's the board guy on the station. He'd know how I stand with them. If you can square things for me, I'd owe you one even bigger than Ellie owes me. Thanks for helping me with the board. You're a real pal. Or I guess I should say, Ellie is one, huh?
Halcyon News. We interrupt. How do you do? Ah, how might I assist you? Miss Doyle owes the board a significant sum. Alas, the only collateral she has is her organs. Compulsory donation is quite legal in such cases. An eminently fair point, my friend. And with my seal returned, I can stamp all kinds of documents. Such as this debt relief order. Which, if anyone asks, doesn't exist. The very concept is anathema. Here you are. See that Miss Doyle signs and returns this form to me. Let's never speak of this again. I am impressed, Mr. Bedford. Indeed, you harbor a benevolent heart. I'm sure Dr. Fenhill will be quite pleased to have Miss Doyle's debt erased. I'm glad we could do right by that lady, Captain. Real glad. Would you please ask your compatriots to lower their voices? That's the spirit. Wish I could say it was good to see you, Ellie. At least you finally got your chance to square our debt. That ought to make you smile for once, huh? Nothing makes me happier than being even. Except being right. That's nice, too. The good news came through the wireless. Looks like you paid my debt to Jesse. I guess that means I owe you now, right? Tell you what, I'm a little short on bits at the moment. But I'm a decent scrapper and a better than average sawbones. If you're looking for a medic, I can work my debt off. It's like people touching a cookie and leaving it in the box. It's just one of those things that gets under my skin. You won't be sorry. Though it looks like you've got a full roster already. Time to play favorites, Captain. Welcome to the crew, Miss Ellie. We're real happy to have you. Yes, you caught me ruminating again. Guilty as charged. What's occupying your thoughts? Nothing too out of the ordinary. Just your run-of-the-mill vicar with a violently enthusiastic disposition. Uh, that's what my parents called it. I grew up in a pit of a town much like Edgewater. I was destined to be a laborer like my parents, but I was infected early with a need to solve the equation. My passion didn't sit well with them. On the contrary, they internalized the precepts of scientism like no one I've ever known. They had a pure faith, a faith that brought joy to them regardless of the situation. I envied that. I wanted that peace. I thought if I became a vicar, I could find it. Or at the very least, find out why I lacked it. They thought I was fighting the plan, should have accepted my lot. Some people pursue the clergy for power, prestige, but that was not me. The simple version is this. The force which we call the Grand Architect created the universal equation that underlies and defines everything in the universe. 
everything flows from the equation, or in layman's terms, the grand plan. Is the grand architect a consciousness? A natural force? Did it create the equation on purpose? The answers to these questions don't really matter. The equation, the plan, is all that matters. Contentment is found by accepting one's role in the plan. Scientism, as its name implies, believes that nature abhors equality. The strong survive and the weak perish for the betterment of the whole. And reason, not emotion, is the seat of all morality. Wisdom means accepting the vicissitudes of life with grace and dignity.
I prefer to think of it as looking at reality for what it truly is, not how we'd like it to be. Yes? I have run headlong into too many walls in my pursuit of the truth. This book is my last hope, and you were my only hope of getting it translated. I honestly don't know what I'd do. This quest has consumed me for the better part of my life. I fear there's nothing else left to me. What about you? What's your story? And how did he do that? Well, you do seem different than every other colonist. Let's pretend for the moment I believe you. What are you going to do now? That seems a dangerous proposition. Why risk your life now that it's been returned to you? Oh, I see. You have my condolences. I've been thinking on that. There's a former so uh, infamous philosopher scholar who fled Terra II some years ago. He's an expert on Bakonu. He's also who told me of the journal's presence in Emerald Vale. If anyone in this colony could translate that book, it would be him. That's a good question. We should start on the Groundbreaker. It's where I'd go if I wanted to get off Terra 2. Great place to pick up a ride to Hephaestus, Scylla, even Monarch. All I need is access to a data cartridge from the security terminal. Their easily hackable system keeps a registry of all crew manifests for both arrivals and departures. Before I transferred to Edgewater, I had a wealth of time to develop certain, uh, secular skills during my years serving a particular penitentiary flock. I meditated, led sermons, provided guidance to the inmates as needed, of course. I also played prison yard tossball and taught myself a bit about computronic security systems. Thank you, Captain. Unless you're here to file an incident report or to inquire about the bounty posting, I must kindly ask you to clear out. The Mardet's offices aren't for leisure time, nor loitering. Got a hot one for you. Captain Gunner McRed. Just 26 hours old. The posting, that is. Not the criminal. Uh, allegations include several counts of flying under the influence, carrying open alcoholic containers, failure to pay docking fees, resisting arrest, and assaulting not one, but two officers. <sighs> Dreadful, ain't it? 
Such blatant disregard for order. It's a real problem in the youth these days. It's true enough that he ain't particularly deadly, but the interest on each fine being compounded as they are means he'll be paying with his life insurance. Only way to cover it. Last tip we got pointed toward the back bays. You want the reward? Do the legwork. You and about six other enterprising mavericks. It's only a matter of time before someone brings me McRed's head, or his lucky lighter, as proof of kill. I do hope you're the lucky hunter, though. Good luck and skip speed to you. Hi there. Haven't seen you around before. What can Groundbreaker Security do for you today? We can't just let anyone walk in here. I wouldn't be, uh, well, that's not... Uh, we just don't. Maybe if you clear an open bounty and get in good with Commandant Sunita, or help Chief Tennyson fix this heat, that might warrant a thank you tour or something. I'm not allowed to file stuff, sir. Oh, right. Uh, okay. Uh, mind you don't touch nothing. Fees or no, the other Mardettes won't take it kindly. There it is. Just yank the drive and I'll do the rest. Got it. His name is Reginald Cheney, and he joined a sublight salvage crew. Only he's not listed on the return manifest. Must have made landfall somewhere he wasn't supposed to. Ah, uh, yes. Here. There's a domicile on Monarch in Fallbrook, rented to the same bit cart he used to buy his seat on the salvage ship. I should have guessed. What better place to lay low if you wish to avoid the authorities? Oh, it's nothing. I suppose I really didn't have much faith in actually finding him. Was a bit of a long shot, wasn't it? I admit it was a bit of a long shot, but when you've spent as many hours as I have in contemplation of the universe's secrets, you sometimes get a sense for these things. stuff all right but it looks like he's not home let's search the room try to f sounds like cheney's gone gold panning down on the river i guess even scholars need to find ways to make ends meet in exile
cleaner. Stocked with better booze. Cheaper. I had a patient who went swimming at a place like this. Got eaten from the inside out by parasitic amoebas. What do you want? Oh, hey, Vicar Max. What are you doing on Monarch? I thought scientists ain't welcome here. Haven't you heard? Everyone's welcome here. It's a fucking worker's paradise. But you wouldn't know anything about that, would you? Never worked a day in your miserable life. You're just a parasite, living off my goodwill. Well, guess what? My goodwill's exhausted, along with my temper. This is the guy who told me about the book while we were in prison. I lied about finding a scholar. But I don't care about any of that anymore. I just want to inflict massive amounts of pain on this guy. Oh, he knew. Didn't you? Didn't you? Okay, okay, I admit it. I was tired of your high and mighty speechifying all the time. It was just a joke, I swear. I, I didn't mean nothing by it. See, Captain? I've dealt with this swine before. I know how he thinks. Now, where were we? Oh, that's right. I was about to beat you. Severely. Wait, wait, wait! I know who can translate the book for you. It's too late for that. I threw away my life chasing fairy tales. Will punishing you fix any of that? Of course not. But by law, it will make me feel a whole lot better. Okay, okay. Talk, Reggie. It was stolen from some sort of expert on philosophism. Weird hermit lady on Scylla. My father used to deliver supplies to the mining outpost there. It's true. My father collected some extra bits on the side by diverting some of the supplies to the gal. The way he told it, he thought the book looked valuable, so he took it. Couldn't find any buyers when it turned out to not only be French, but banned as well. Fine. We've got more important things to do anyway. I want to thank you for talking some sense into me back there with Cheney. It has been a long time since I gave in to my... violent enthusiasm. You're right. I owe you an apology. I've been so obsessed for so long, I couldn't see anything else. You offered me a place on your crew. Friendship. And I used you to get to Cheney. And even then, you saved me from myself. I don't know if I could live with myself had I gone through with it. You owe me nothing, I know, but I... I'm begging your forgiveness. Thank you. I promise I'll be nothing but truthful from this point forward. Oh, exactly as you'd imagine. Can't say I enjoyed the stint. It did provide me with plenty of time to think. 
The way I see it, the universe was snapping me back to where I needed to be. You stray too far from the course of your destiny, the world will try to correct for it. have been neutralized. Getting close to the Hermit. I can feel it. Don't mess with us. Violence is the only way! What have the solar winds deposited on my doorstep now? Just more dirt and debris? Or do you actually believe you are here seeking the truth? I must admit, I tire of the truth seekers. Mayhaps you're here to rob me? That would be so much more exciting. We've been told this was once yours. I believe the knowledge within here contains the answers I seek. Answers that will free men's minds from toil. I can translate it, but it won't do you any good. I can see you are a man in a hurry, and the insights in that book would take you years of study to fully comprehend. 
I have spent my life in contemplation. I believe my mind is prepared to receive the truth. There is one way that can speed up the process. It involves a combination of several ingredients, some of which can be fatal. It is not for the faint of heart or the unprepared. And I believe he may be right. There is both violence and peace warring inside you, Max. This process would be extremely tenuous for one such as yourself. I'm committed, no matter the cost. All right. Head on into the meditation room and partake of the sacramental incense. It's waiting on the table when you're ready to begin. the victims of a tasteless joke being perpetuated... Uh, perpetrated? I mean, we're being made fools of, aren't we? When I get out of here, I'm going to show that hermit what you get for messing with me. Maximilian, always ready to give up, to lash out. Always searching for answers, but always in the wrong place. Never looking inside himself. Danger! Harmful vapors can lead to permanent brain damage. Thank you. It relieves me to see there's at least one positive influence in my son's life after all these years. Has he told you how he thoughtlessly abandoned us? Thoughtlessly? How could you say that? I only wanted you and Father to be proud of me. I was going to be the perfect vessel. I was going to be a better... Uh, more full of the plan. This here, it's all coming out wrong. The plan. It filled you with a joy I could never feel. I wanted it. And being a laborer made me miserable. I was better than that. You certainly convinced yourself you were. But don't feel bad. We continually lie to ourselves, weaving stories in a vain attempt to convince us that we are in control of anything. These stories are how we try to make sense of our lives, but they are not real, are they? They're just stories. You need to drop your story and see the truth. Danger! Harmful vapors can lead to... Permanent brain damage. You want me to give up my... my discipline? My... control? I... Oh, but I can't. I can't. I... 
Without order, there is chaos. You need to love the chaos, Maximilian. Let it envelop you. Take you where it will. Besides, you really have no choice anyway. No, that's not true. The basis of everything is order, not chaos. It's true, I know it is. So did you. Why are you denying it? Before you died, the plan made you happy. No, it didn't. I made myself happy. There's nothing holding you back but you. If you can't understand that, you will never understand anything. Goodbye, Maximilian. This whole thing, it's... It's... It's just a farce, right? Just... Just my own brain working against me? You couldn't be more right. Hello, Max. What? Who? Why do you look like me? Are you me? Not really. I'm who you think you are. I am disciplined. Controlled. I have no doubts. And I don't exist. Yet you have judged yourself against me your whole life. Why? Why do you berate yourself for not being me? I don't. I mean, that's not how it is at all. I just... I don't know. Is it wrong to try to be a gooder, better person than I am? But that's not what you're doing, is it? You're desperately trying to find a story to organize reality in your head. A story to control everything. A new story of the happy you. The contented you. Me. That's not... It can't be right. I, I've only been searching for the answer to the equation. Because it will set us free. Won't it? How? By removing the need to make any decision. To have your life completely controlled. The illusion of certainty. Your obsession allowed you to avoid the real question. Who are you? I'm Max. Me! I'm real! You can't convince me otherwise! Please don't convince me I'm not. Error! 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 Uh, uh, unable to pro pro process conflicting optical stimuli. The concept of Max is what's not real. By the architect. Architect? How could I have believed in an architect? That's ridiculous. I must be losing my mind completely. What you're saying almost makes sense. We exist inside our thoughts, thinking we're in control. That's it, isn't it? We have no control over anything. It's all lies. How could I not have seen this? But how do we escape our... ourselves? I see you're back with us. Feared we lost you there. Never seen anyone pass out yet stay upright before. Ruined? You seem to be having quite the time. Though I must admit I was a bit concerned when you stripped naked and tried to eat your clothes. I was joking. You passed out fairly early in the process. Well before I realized what an ignorant fool I've been. Everything is perfect. In a way. 
Perhaps it's more accurate to say I was asking the wrong questions. I understand so much more now. I see it all. All there is to be experienced, to be lived. Of course there is pain and loss, but the suffering is caused by trying to control reality, clinging to the way you want things to be, not enjoying the way they are. I am content. I've finally found what I was looking for, even though I was looking for the wrong thing. So, have you found your answers? Not so much found as finally listened. Yes. It is quite the convoluted maze we build for ourselves. It looks like you learned something in there as well. Of course you were. <laughs> 